welcome back students to your last topic of your chapter that is your abnormal colligative properties or abnormal molar mass so in your ncrt textbook it's given as the heading is given as abnormal molecular mass or molar mass so everything both are same let's come back and see so we have studied already four types of colligative properties that is your uh, relative lowering of vapor pressure elevation in boiling point depression freezing point as well as osmotic pressure so we have also done some mini numericals of different varieties which is uh, which are important for your exams then let us come back we are going to end the topic with this concept that is abnormal colligative property which was proposed by Ranthoff in 1886 so he has proposed proposed this concept what why why what is like actually what made him uh, uh, express this his concept is basically very well know uh, suppose let me take an example suppose if i take kcl right now <laughs> kcl when i uh, dissolve it in aqueous solution then kcl will very you know ionic compound it dissociates into k plus plus cl minus that suppose if i take barium chloride or magnesium chloride calcium chloride anything this dissociates into ba plus 2 plus 2 cl minus plus and minus gets okay, gets cancelled and total this uh, charge is zero Done. Suppose if I take magnesium chloride, as I said, magnesium chloride again the same story, Mg plus two plus two Cl minus. No. What is happening here? This these particular uh, uh, ionic compounds when they dissociate, they are going to dissociate. This is one and uh, one cation and one anion. Yes. So he said whenever such compounds are dissociating, he has given a, a unit that is Van der Waals factor, which is denoted by I. I'll explain what is I also. So he said I, the degree of association or degree of dissociation alpha, which I'll okay. As of now, remember he said I factor for this only for now. Remember like this I factor for this. That is the number of ions dissociating, which is equal to here in this case how many two. Here how many one plus two I factor is equal to three. Here also I factor is equal to three. Done. So he said this is the case. Now suppose if I take examples like benzoic acid, C six H five C O H. If I take an example of acetic acid, let's see what is going to happen when I uh, dissolve it in aqueous solution. Benzoic acid, how does it dissociate? Or uh, just see, this becomes C six H five. Yeah, C one side double bond O, one side single bond, and you also have H. This is going to form a hydrogen bonding here, and this is also going to form a hydrogen bonding here, right? Now suppose if I take H O here and start with here, this whole thing will come above. That's it, simple. Yeah, this O H is here, O H is here. Now C six. Okay, let us write this first. Now let's see. Now double bond O here, double bond O here. Now see here, C six H five, C six H five. I wrote one uh, this one carbon also here. I have to write here also carbon. Okay, because C six H five here, C six H five here, C here, C here, and C six H five C O O H one molecule. C six H five C O O H one more molecule. So what is happening here? Whenever benzoic acid is dissolved, it is associating in nature. So he said I value for this concept here. I value is two. Here also I value is three. Here I value is three. But here In this case, I value was found to be 0.5 only. Let's come back and see this example. Acetic acid, CH3 on this side, CH3 on this side, C on this side, C on this side. Done. <coughs> double bond O on this side, double bond O on this side. OH on this side, which is forming a hydrogen bonding. OH on this side, which is again forming a hydrogen bonding. Here again for this. This is your hydrogen bonding. This is your hydrogen bonding. I value calculated was 0.5. Now, are you not finding abnormality in the uh, this in uh, molecular uh, this in uh, I factor abnormality observed in the number of solute particles? Now, this is a concept. So, what he said is, whenever a molecule is undergoing dissociation, or whenever a molecule is undergoing association. They exhibit abnormal molecular masses, or are they going to show abnormal molar masses, or are they exhibit abnormal colligative properties? Why? How, ma'am? How are we relating colligative properties? We said colligative properties are dependent on what? Dependent on 
number of solute particles number of solute particles isn't it yes now what is this number of solute particles here here solute particles have become like they have become from one it has become two double here what happened the number of solute particles from one it has become 0.5 isn't it yeah so it has become half half of it done so basically your colligative property depends upon number of solute particles so the variations due to association and dissociation makes it also change yes that is why we call abnormal colligative property so always remember we are going to multiply a factor of i with colligative properties which i'll be discussing very soon so remember one important thing because of dissociation and because of association they are going to exhibit abnormal colligative property yes done now i know this concept now i have to now further go and show what and calculate what is this uh, i in the particular formula what is alpha let us start calculating let us take out the examples and now start calculating van't hoff's factor how to calculate van't hoff's factor now i said association and dissociation isn't it now let us take that example now first let us divide the board into half for the first one i'm going to uh, pick up dissociation concept uh, i a dissociation for example i already okay let us take kcl here here i'm going to pick up association concept what did i do i picked up acetic acid or benzoic acid okay wherever hydrogen bonding is formed done let's start initially instead of k and cl let me take total as a this dissociates into b let us assume as of now i'm just assuming a and b initially when time is equal to 0 the initial concentration of a was 1 mole at that particular initial concentration b was 0 yes now as as time is equal to t now the reaction started proceeding forward time is equal to t seconds now what will happen to the concentration okay now this particular concentration of b i am introducing a term called alpha what is alpha alpha is degree of uh, dissociation i am uh, instead of writing how much has this uh, dissociated i am picking up a concentration as alpha that is degree of dissociation now suppose if i say a has converted to b with some moles as i showed you in know, barium chloride ba plus 2 plus 2 cl minus so that n you are going to write here done let's come back and see now when this is n into alpha number of moles and amount dissociated when i come back to a concentration it is nothing but 1 minus alpha by a part of it less than that because this is decrease isn't it mole a has decreased to b so this is total and now in that 1 minus alpha is a concentration of a hope you understood this concept this is over let's come back and see uh, association when i speak about association i have a molecule a i said during association this factor as what did i say i is equal to 0.5 because of hydrogen bonding this i we are going to write it as a we will write it as b also not a problem but it has associated i'm writing in this way that means one is linked to the other here separately here linked together one after the other done here initially when initial concentration a will be 1 mole then initially this there's nothing formed yes further when t is equal to t seconds means the reaction started proceeding it started uh, associating this is association uh, coming together then what will happen alpha i said uh, the here i took alpha as degree of dissociation here let me take alpha as degree of association but remember here what happened here the i factor has become half so instead of here what did i write it has become some moles in alpha so now i has become half of it because of hydrogen bonding i am going to write as alpha by n half double yes now when this is alpha by n what will happen to the a factor yes it's the same isn't it 1 minus alpha a part of it both are same now let us come back and further solve now if i have to calculate total number of moles in solution here also same thing total number of moles in solution let's come back and add 1 minus alpha plus n alpha total 
here what do you write 1 minus alpha plus alpha by n total why did I take this total? Basically, Van Toff has introduced a formula I is equal to total number of moles after uh, so, uh, listen, uh, dissociation by the initial number of moles. So, what did he say? I, uh, one of the formula, we will be learning more. He said total number of moles after dissociation. by initial number of moles initial number of moles this is what he said here also is the same thing now let's see what is i equal to now what is the total number total number is 1 minus alpha plus n alpha what is the initial number of moles one mole yes let's come back and write here same story i is equal to total number is 1 minus alpha plus alpha by n let us put this in bracket divided by what is the initial number of moles here also 1 let's further solve this how can i solve this when i take this particular thing now just see i'm going to find alpha isn't it i have to find alpha just just uh, i first let us simplify this i can simplify now concentrate on this particular part this one, one. This is plus one, isn't it? One plus. Now, I'm going to take alpha as common. Right? So, alpha, I'm just concentrating on this. I'm taking alpha as common. Now, n comes on this side, n minus one. Okay, how, why did you, ma'am, how did we get this? Let's see. n alpha, n alpha, minus one alpha, minus one alpha. So, I've got that answer. Simple. Let's see on this side. If I solve, I'm taking 1 plus, I'm taking alpha common, I'm con concentrating on this, just see, 1 minus n, here it is n minus 1, here it is 1 minus n minus 1, let us see how, 1 minus n, 1 by n into alpha is n, alpha by n plus minus 1 into alpha is minus alpha, correct? plus 1 plus 1 everything is the same I just got common terms together further if I take this <coughs> uh, dissociation concept just see I can now I still have I isn't it there is I here I is equal to isn't it this is again I just turned it now let us find out alpha from this because alpha is the main thing which I have to find that is your degree of dissociation alpha is equal to now I comes on this side this becomes I minus 1 by n is n minus 1 so this is your formula which I'll be using for numericals alpha is equal to degree of dissociation which is equal to I minus 1 by n minus 1 that is for whenever you find dissociation in the numerical if I have to take association, let us further solve this. Now, this is still this is still i is equal to 1, isn't it? Yes. Now, alpha, I am taking it out. This comes here. on This, this becomes i minus 1. Now, this whole thing, let us take it down. n minus 1. If I further take LCM, what will come to? i minus 1 is here. Right? Now, let us take LCM. How does this is here? n n1 so 1 minus this is again 1 1 n 1 so 1 n's are and this is n i can further write this as alpha is equal to i minus 1 by 1 minus n into this goes to the numerator n so this is your formula for degree of association so remember two formulas degree of dissociation and degree of association i'll write them both here Please check for dissociation the formula is i alpha is equal to i minus 1 by n minus 1 uh, for association alpha is equal to i minus 1 by just see 1 minus n into n these are the two formulas so let us come back and learn Van Toff's factor significance so we've already seen why are we studying abnormal colligative properties based on your Van Toff's factor let us come back and see in the exam if they ask you what type of question suppose what is Van Toff's factor and explain its significance so this is how you're going to write your answer let's see so very well know I Van Toff's factor is denoted by I 
correct yes now remember important thing there are three conditions what are the three conditions if i is equal to 0 that means the solute has not affected there is no change in the solute nothing no association or no dissociation no change in solute concentration solute concentration nothing then yes now if i value is less than 1 as we have seen in acetic acid or benzoic acid where it has i value equal to 0.5 so if it is less than 1 that means what has happened it has got associated association occurs Done. If it is greater than one, where I've shown for KCl and barium chloride, zinc chloride, all these, if it is greater than one, I call that particular value or calculate or that particular value dissociation. That means I factor can be used if the value seeing the value, I can signify that the reaction has changed or not, or I can give uh, signify that the reaction is undergoing association or not. I can signify whether the reaction is undergoing dissociation or not. So that's the first significance, very important. Then one more thing for cal. Calculating I or I can be used, or we have three important formulas. The first formula, I is equal to total number of moles after dissociation. I know the full thing. After dissociation divided by initial number of moles. We'll be using this in the numerical also. Initial number of moles. This is one formula. The second formula is I is equal to we call it as M cal by M observed. What is that? M cal by M observed. What is M? M is nothing but calculated molecular mass divided by observed molecular mass. Observed molecular mass. This is one more formula. and one more formula where i where we represent i as now we are studying colligative property abnormal colligative properties isn't it now just see observed magnitude of colligative property divided by normal What is magnitude? I mean, the value isn't it? Normal magnitude. You can also you can also write as value. Normal magnitude of the same property, whichever property you are studying. Yes. So using this concept, yeah, we said every time whenever a molecule associates or dissociates, we are finding some change in the colligative property because colligative property are dependent upon number of solute particles. So now to get or to obtain exact molecular mass, to obtain exact molecular masses what do they do we are going to rectify those by multiplying the factor of i with the colligative properties then you are rectifying you will get the correct exact molecular mass and you can study the colligative properties so initially to get to obtain it then what do we do now we are trying to rectify pick up the first colligative property that is p not s minus ps that is p not s that is your uh, vapor pressure of the pure solvent and vapor pressure of the solution which is proportional to which is equal to molecular uh, the mole fraction of the solute isn't it this is rlvp so we are going to multiply a factor of i to this done you have, now you will get the correct molecular mass second property delta tb elevation in boiling point which is equal to ebullioscopic constant into molality we have studied this multiply the factor of i to this in the third one delta tf freezing point kf into m cryoscopic constant in molality multiply a factor i to this now you will get the correct mass the last one osmotic pressure phi is equal to n by v r t now multiply a factor of i to this you will get the correct value that is correct osmotic pressure value which it so this is how your wagner's factor is utilized to explain this concept these are the formulas which i can use it for solving the numericals this is how you are correcting the colligative properties and obtaining the correct mass so this is called significance of wagner's factor